So again, in, in today's session for a publisher course as an OER, uh, we're going to be following the agenda that we see here today. We've already met each other, and I look forward to hearing a bit more about, uh, as much as I can, some of your experiences today. We're going to first provide a bit of context about Blackboard and open education. So there's been some discussion out there um, since some of our announcements last October. I wanted to help provide that context for you all who may not have seen that or heard about those, the announcements that we've made. And then in particular, focus on the, the topic of today, which is how to publish your course as an open educational resource. And as it mentions in the description, we'll be utilizing what's known as course sites for that. So as I go through uh, some slides to give you a sense of what that is, we'll also then dig into the live system so you can see that how it would work, uh, both if you're a current Core Sites user or if you're not yet a Core Sites user, how that might look. So I am targeting two audiences today. If for some reason I talk about something that you're not familiar with, please feel free to go ahead. Uh, you're welcome to raise your hand or uh, you're welcome to press the talk button if you uh, would like to go ahead and ask a question live. All right, then we'll take a look at some looking ahead. And here's where I would like some input from you all. So as you're, as you're seeing what I'm demonstrating to you, this is really a, a start for us in, in certain regards in this space. So I'm happy to gain further insight and feedback uh, around what you think might help make the experience uh, a little bit better, as well as some new capabilities that might make open educational resource sharing uh, much more beneficial to you and your colleagues. And then, don't, uh, as quite, we see questions in the discussion out here at the end, but just really a point on the agenda. Not have, we don't have to save that for the end. Happy to get your um, your questions here. Now, I do see some questions coming in about uh, course sites in general. So, Levetta will go ahead and address that too. Um, once we get the session finished, I really want to focus on uh, the topic at hand, and I'll go through and make sure that I address any other questions that I see here in the, the chat session as a parking lot that may not directly relate. Okay, and I see that we have Jeff on here as well from our support group, so he might be able to connect with you as well, um, perhaps as I'm presenting, in case he has the time to do that. So let's first start with some general context about Blackboard and open education. So as we know, the concept of openness has really expanded uh, greatly as the teaching and learning practices evolve in particularly the online learning space. And with this new level of importance and with the OER movement really gaining traction, Blackboard has tried to step up its game, particularly within the past year or few years. And I would say a key individual who has helped really move Blackboard forward in the openness area has been Ray Henderson, our president for Blackboard Learn. Uh, who joined us after the uh, after we joined forces with Angel Learning. So a few of the examples that we have here in terms of Blackboard's attempt to become a bit more open despite being proprietary is to publish its database, keep up with the current standards, uh, and then allow our clients to utilize those standards, such as the Shibboleth standard, SCORM content packaging, the common cartridge packaging, basic LTI, so we have a great relationship with IMS and other standards organizations and representation um, in those organizations to really ensure that any of the clients who are leveraging Blackboard as a LMS can go ahead and operate within the standard space. We also have a Blackboard building blocks framework, and we'll see a good uh, number of examples of how those that these building blocks uh, are used in core sites, and this is uh, the way for clients to go ahead and leverage the open APIs that expand each year uh, to go ahead and add on to or expand Blackboard in different ways that we haven't yet done so within the core product. And then our focus on open education resources, uh, which we'll talk about today, entails the use of course sites, which I'll just generally describe to you all now, is Blackboard's free online course creation and facilitation service specifically geared for individual instructors. And I'll dive a bit more into to what that is today. But our, our, our entry into that space will really focus a lot on course sites and some of the capabilities that we've enabled within that platform itself. Okay, and then as we look at uh, the coming year, uh, not sure if any of you had come to 
EDUCAUSE last year, which is an international technology and higher education conference, or perhaps even ISTE uh, in the summer. But last year, and uh, President Ray has the president of Learn, Ray Henderson, outlined a few of our strategies for the coming year. And part of that is really to expand our lens when it comes to openness, not just following the standards, but digging a bit more deeply into open education resources. Um, and along that line, for clients who are leveraging our technology, clarifying a license policy to help grow with the openness movement, supporting them by not necessarily uh, by helping them expand their license to support non-revenue generating users in an open courseware type of, of uh, situation. And then also looking at how we can continue to expand the practices of Blackboard technology and support open education. And this is really the area that we'll be focusing on today with core sites, as well as gaining your insights. So part of this session is definitely meant to show you what we're thinking and what we're doing to date and gain your insights into what might, uh, how it can be better, how it can be different. So I definitely look forward to each of your uh, contributions in that regard. I haven't, don't see any related questions to this in the chat, so I'll just say, you know, if there are any questions, let me know. I'll hold on a moment before we move forward. Okay. Well, if, again, if there are questions, feel free to enter them in the chat, and I'll keep checking back. Or go ahead and raise your hand, and you can uh, press the talk button. So when it comes to publishing a course as an OER, here in, uh, is where we really tried to focus on over the last year of enabling in individual instructors to go ahead and create a course and uh, follow along what we think would be the five major use cases of sharing and consuming educational resources. So as we took a look at uh, these use cases, what we really wanted to do was empower instructors to author content, enable them to attach a, a license to that open educational resource, facilitate the sharing of the course elements and package, support the efficient discovery of resources for those looking for packages, and then broaden the usage of OER, mainly through the uh, use cases the one through four. Okay, through the discovery and shareability. So as we took a look at these use, court, these use cases, we look at what we currently had in place. And Core Sites was something that had come together as a resource. And as of February 2011, we had decided to make that a no-cost option for individual teachers who may not have access to technology, like Blackboard at their schools. So when we take a look at course authoring, I'll be using the uh, course sites environment today. And here's just a quick snapshot of our home page. So we'll see that as I get into the system a bit later. But then as you dive into an actual course, one of the elements that I'll highlight um, is that you do have a wide variety now within course sites to go ahead and choose from a number of course templates or course structures, as we've named them, to align with your uh, teaching strategies, teaching or your content organization, your teaching approaches. So the course authoring is really something that we feel we can support pretty well through uh, course sites itself. And just so you get a sense of if you're not already familiar with course sites, again, it has been released in February of 2010, and it is Blackboard's free hosted online course creation and facilita facilitation service, specifically designed for individual instructors. Again, our, our, our vision here is to help support teachers who may not have access to technology like Blackboard or other LMS course management systems so they can sign up for course sites and have access to up and create up to five courses. Um, they have, as we see pictured here, represented, repre represented by some of the pictures, they have the ability to have an asynchronous learning environment okay, where students can access via the web provided an access a connection to the internet and a computer. They can go ahead and have access to students through mobile technology, leveraging the Blackboard Mobile Learn uh, building block. Okay, they can go ahead and launch a live classroom like we're doing today and connect with students in a live way through voice or through chat. 
and they can also push out text notifications. So some of the four major elements of, of really connecting, delivering instruction in different ways and connecting with students, particularly on devices that they're, that they're using now. Okay, we've also partnered with a, a good number of other technology companies. I won't go too much into that right now, but as you've, if you haven't yet explored core sites, there's a good num amount of information for you along that regard. Okay. So the course authoring piece really, again, feel is targeted through core sites. Um, at present, what we're going to be covering today, for those people who do have access to Blackboard at their schools, um, you can use core sites to go ahead and try out what we're covering today, but it is not yet a feature within the core product. So we are using core sites as a way to incubate innovation and obtain uh, some end user feedback. Now, part of sharing open education resource, as we know, is, is some uh, area of concern in terms of licensing. And what we've decided to do is partner with Creative Commons, who has become a leader in that area for the licensing of open educational resources. So just what we see here is a quick screenshot. If I were in a course that I'd created in course sites, and I came to an area that we call Publish Open Resource, Okay, we would go ahead and see that this is automatically going to be licensed with what Creative Commons calls their CC BY license or their Attribution 3.0 license. And in essence, this is their one of their most open licenses, and it requires for the users who then utilize this information that they need to attribute the author of this work. Okay. We are looking at, as we'll talk about later, other, uh, other licensing options through Creative Commons, but we agreed to have the most open. So this allows for both commercial and non-commercial use of courses at present. But again, the author must need to be attributed. When I do publish, we'll take a look and see how that uh, ends up happening through the live demonstration. But as I import that class, either 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 into a Blackboard environment or if I'm using the common cartridge export, we see that in the course areas, I also have the attributions quite visible. And then particularly if we're using uh, later versions of Blackboard, we see that an OER license text file comes into the content collection and also is attributable uh, to the initial author there with some of the metadata coming through. So we worked with Creative Commons quite closely, including Cable Green um, and some of his colleagues to ensure that this process was pretty seamless and the attribution was as visible as possible. So I see a good number of uh, amount of activity on the chat, so let me step back here for a moment and see if I can address any questions before we move farther. Okay, so I see that you all are helping each other out a little, so thank you very much for that. So Ben, I think your is your question is the the most relevant here. The license uh, you ask the license is default for all course sites courses, or is it an option? So the the license is only applied to the course package if you choose to publish your course as an OER. So if I and I'll demonstrate this, but if you actually go into your class, click on publish open resource, and then up above. Or what we have the screenshot here, there would be an option for yes or no. And if you decide to make your course available as an OER and click submit, that's when the Creative Commons license is applied. Okay. So then the third use case and, and goal here again is enabling the sharing. So within Core Sites, we have one of two options uh, in terms of sharing. In our what we call our navigation ribbon, all the way at the top of our screen. At any point in your course, you have the option of sharing your course uh, outside of the environment using social media. And this would be something that you could decide to share with your students, or perhaps you have an, an element of your class that you would like to share through Facebook, through Twitter, through your LinkedIn connections. So that's always available to you uh, once, again, your course is created. This doesn't have, um, it's just an option for you to go ahead and leverage. This in particular, um, it would be for you if you would want to share elements of your class. 
And as we see here, your course can be made available for guest access. So if, you're, if it's your students, if you want to share out items with them by Twitter or Facebook, they could log in if you want to keep it protected. Or for those that want to have a more open environment, there is a guest access avail uh, button that would be available as users come back to review that resource. Okay, but really strictly related to the OER, once I decide to publish my class as an open education resource, what we have here is a, what we call a course homepage. So each of, the, each of your courses that you decide to publish gets a public URL. And we have a, the description that is uh, available for us as we enter our course uh, descriptions when we create them, the option to browse the guest if we enable, and here where students can opt to uh, request enrollment or where current students can go ahead and log in, and then information about the instructors. Again, I'll show this live as well, just showing some screenshots to give you some context. But on this course homepage is where the open education resource area ends up publishing and where then the consumers can go ahead and download a package either in Common Cartridge 1.1 or as a Blackboard package. Okay, and you can see that the Creative Commons license is applied here as well. And on the actual publication page in the course is where we have some control over this metadata. Now for myself, if I'm teaching this course, as you can see I'm one of the instructors on this example, I can come to the course page and decide to share more widely using my social networks. So that is another option for us to more broadly announce that we've published our course and share that with my networks. John and Jeremy can also do the same. And if someone discovers this resource, they can also share with their networks. So this is one of the ways that supports the broadening the use and the distribution of OER is by putting this type of sharing on the page where the OER resource can be found. Okay. So along that line, um, our first step into the discovery use case here, the fourth use case that we thought about as we put together this capability, is how, and we know the need is for folks to go ahead and find these resources. So as we had started to do research in this area, we started to learn a little bit about the LRMI, or the Learning Resource Metadata Initiative. And just by the use of the green check or red X, can I get a sense by who is familiar with LRMI or not? And the red that can be found above the participant panel, the fourth button there on the right. Just give me a green check or a red X if you're familiar or not with a LRMI. And that way I know how deeply I need to go into that. Okay. Okay, so it looks like a majority do, do not know. Levetta, I see your hand up, so I'll get to you in just a moment. But so the LRMI is an initiative that is really geared um, t to target the rich search of open education resources on the web. And it is a, an initiative that is being co-led by Creative Commons along with the Association of Educational Publishers. Now the LRMI is using and it's really meant to be established a common vocabulary and a metadata so that as you're searching for open education resources on the web, you have a much richer experience. And the example I can provide to you is currently Google, if you search for in, uh, recipes on Google, you will most likely see, for instance, if I search for apple pie, you would see that you have options that show up on the left-hand side about whether, you know, by, you can then filter that search by ingredient. Um, so if I want a, uh, a crumbly crust or I want a pastry crust, you know, I can go ahead, if, if I want cinnamon, cardamom, and, and all those different things, I can look for recipes with those particular elements. So the LRMI is really trying to leverage that type of search capability, but associate it with educational resources and give you the ability to search by subject, perhaps by um, level of difficulty, perhaps by standard, you know, whether that be K-12 or higher education. So if I'm a nursing instructor and I want to look for nursing resources, you know, I, I could eventually be able to filter out those resources much more so than I can do today. 
now that the internet really has grown in, in terms of a wealth of, of information. So what we've done is aligned um, ourselves with that LRMI standard and have begun to utilize the metadata. So it's still in beta, and, uh, uh, but it leverages what's known as schema.org metadata, um, which is being which is what's being used by Google and Bing to run that type of search I described earlier. But the LRMI is really creating an educational vocabulary within their creative work uh, metadata schema. So we uh, went ahead and aligned with the LRMI and worked with them. And part, this is all behind the scenes, but those who are more technically inclined um, you know, don't get scared by this screen, per se. Uh, someone like me, who is more of the front end and educator, could jump back, but I've learned a bit more about what's going on here. So as I showed you that page earlier, as we publish this page with the Open Education Resource, what's happening behind the scenes is we're using that LRMI or schema.org metadata so that as it's being indexed on the web and people are searching for resources, it will be able to uh, be captured within the, the search engines and give you that rich search experience. So we initially launched this capability in October. Um, we have about 30 to 50, I, I forgot to check before today, folks who have shared resources either just for uh, trying it out or for real. So it might not be that you have a good amount of uh, results when you try it, if you're trying it out today or tomorrow. But as this grows in use, uh, we, it is our hope and as we continue to keep up with the LRMI initiative, once their metadata is fully published, then um, it will begin to grow in terms of that discoverability use case and, uh, and story. Okay, so that was a good amount of information um, along the discoverability. So any questions along that regard? Let me quickly come back here and see what came through. Okay, thanks, Lavetta. Okay, any other further questions about the LRMI or the use of this to enhance the discoverability of the resources being published through core sites? If you have further uh, in interest, you can definitely go to creativecommons.org um, or just Google LRMI. You'll be able to find a good amount of, of information there. Um, and I didn't mention, but just as you know, it, it is being supported by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, who are really trying to make great strides in, in the education space. So as we round out those use cases, the course using, the broadening the use, Okay, so we've seen how we could create a course uh, quite quickly, we've seen how we could then publish that to the course homepage for consumers to download uh, and how it gets licensed and how others can discover. So on that page, and if once I download those packages, again, I can publish a course as an OER as a Blackboard package. And those who would do this from course sites, uh, just note that we are in release 9.1, service pack 8. So if you are importing that into another Blackboard system, uh, they would it would need to be at least pretty close to that. There might be some backward compatibility issues, as we don't promise that. But you can also download the common cartridge 1.1 package and import those into other LMSs like Moodle, Sakai, Desire to Learn. Okay. So really trying to support the portability of content here. Again, make it so that we're not not necessarily viewed as the walled garden of education uh, and platforms. And I see just a question um, that has come through. As a reminder, we are recording this session. Uh, we'll go ahead and share this. Uh, I'll see if I can get a list of folks who have attended from um, the conference coordinators, but you can go ahead and email me at yarl.jonas at blackboard.com and send, I can send you a direct recording. But we will also be publishing to YouTube at, at youtube.com slash course sites. And that takes a little bit, about a day to put up there.
Okay, Pamela, well, I'd have to get back to you on your questions about um, the various LMSs. I'll, and I'll, I'll throw that out to the group to see if uh, anybody else knows something offhand. Hallie, you want to say, uh, does Blackboard in older versions receive common cartridge 1.1 OK? Uh, it depends on how old that version actually is. The, the import of the common cartridge, I believe, was introduced in Service Pack 6, but I'd have to double check on that. And I also, um, you know, with the limited amount of time today, um, I should also have asked your familiar familiarity with common cartridge. But as you know, or may not know, it, the Blackboard export is going to, depending on, you know, it is, it's taking the whole entire course at present, um, including your course content, your settings, your assessments, um, and other Blackboard specific content types like wikis or blogs, whereas your common cartridge is a bit more limited at this point since that's um, the IMS standard that's being built. But it does support your basic content types, uh, basic LTI assessments, including um, your just five question types, which is the matching, multiple choice, um, true and false, essay, and multiple answer. Okay, so the, the common cartridge will be a bit more of a limited package in that regard, just so that you're familiar uh, in case you're not um, familiar with that standard. So Meta, if, you're, uh, if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, you are helping transition us into the live demonstration. So thanks for being my audience plant. Uh, we're going to go ahead and now go through a bit of this process that I had briefly described to you all today. So give me one moment while I share my browser. And what you should be seeing is the course site's home page. I'm going to keep the chat screen up here on the left for a moment just to make sure that I get a confirmation. And can someone give me a green check or a red X if you're not able to see the course site's home page now that I'm sharing? Great, seeing a good number of green green checks coming in. Okay, good. So I see one red X. It could be that it might take a while for that to load. Let me see who that is. Uh, Martha. I'm seeing most everyone except for you. It might be a connection issue on your side. Um, if for some reason it doesn't come back, uh, sometimes the delay, depending on where you're located, um, definitely let me know and we can make sure that we get you the recording as well. Okay, so here we have the Core Sites homepage. For those not familiar, it's at www.coresites.com. As Sarah mentioned earlier, there's a wealth of resources for you all to explore uh, when you have time. Particularly the Learn More shows you a bit uh, more about some of the capabilities specific to Core Sites. The Getting Started gives you a good amount of resources including some videos, t tours and tutorials, a list of our recorded webinars for Getting Started and, and others, as well as some general guides for instructors and students. Okay, so as you have more time, Go ahead and uh, and do that. Now, some of you may not have Core Sites accounts, so it's really easy just to come and click the Sign Up button. I'll quickly describe some of the elements here, but I'm going to log in using a, using an existing user uh, to finish today's demonstration. So it, you can go ahead. You have a choice of filling out the general form here. Uh, here on the left, or if you're an avid user of some of these web services, you can register with your credentials of LinkedIn, behind the Blackboard, Facebook, Twitter, Windows Live, Yahoo, and Google. So here we're not pulling information from those sites, just allowing you to enter uh, credentials so that you don't have to remember another uh, username and password to try to reduce the number of identities you have on the, on the web. Okay, so go ahead and you would fill out this information. The one question that usually comes up a lot as for new users is the course site's URL. Okay, so here is a bit of what I had showed earlier. 
uh, but this is something specific to each of you. So for instance, uh, I would be able to fill out something here like yarljonas.coresites.com, and this becomes a public instructor homepage that I can then share with my colleagues and or students, depending on who will be helping me to, to uh, use this. And let me give you a quick example of that. So again, for new users as you're signing up, this would be an example of an instructor homepage and that customized URL. And then these courses are the ones that I've set up in the system and have decided to make available. And as we'll see shortly again on the screenshot, this is that course homepage but in live format where the students could then come for the enrollment options, learn more about you, and then for consumers of the open educational resource. Okay, so once you do register for course sites, I'll go ahead and just log in as a general user. Okay, now as a as a new um, user, you're going to be immediately taken into a course creation process. Okay, at that state, you'll go ahead and just enter a course title, a course ID, and a description, um, similar to what we see here. So I have some courses that I've already established as a as an instructor user here. Okay, so I'll come into the introductory astronomy class. And let me just go ahead and launch, again, if you are a new user going through the course creation process, and some, some, for some of, the, of you that may not be familiar, okay, you would have a new quick setup guide that would then launch. Okay, so your title and your description would go ahead and populate based on what you had filled out in the prior screen. And then you could go ahead and choose from about 30 course structures. Again, take a look through the different ones that would match your teaching approach, your content organization, or just how you like to have your class. Okay, you have some focuses on time, content, structures that might help replicate coming from a, a different system. Okay, and then some particularly focus on communication, and then on activity. Okay, so choose the structure that would make the most sense for you. And you're welcome to go ahead and click around just to get a sense of what each of those menu items might link to. So this really kickstart the course development process, gives you a template of sorts to, to work with, particularly, again, if you're uh, new to, to core sites um, and to Blackboard in general. And then you're welcome to go ahead and choose a theme. This just helps to provide a visual environment for the students beyond just some uh, colorization, there's some designs that you can choose from. Okay, and then as you want to have more ac access to resources to learn, you know, feel free to explore this area as well. Okay, but you can hide this so this pop-up doesn't come up each time you enter the class. And as you've decided on your changes, you would apply those changes. Okay, and then in essence, you would then have your course environment. So again, I really wanted to focus today on the open education resource uh, tool. So I, I'm happy to uh, entertain questions after we're finished about more of the course environment. But pretending we had spent some time setting up our class, I can come down to the control panel, which is my instructor dashboard to help manage the learning environment. And within the package and utility area is where I'd have publish open resources. And here we can see I've already set this course to be available. Okay, so I have that as yes. I can decide I don't want to I do I do not want to share any longer, so I could click that to no. Okay, but I have the ability of modifying my current title and description if I want that to appear differently on that course homepage that we had seen earlier. Okay. The instructor of the course will come through automatically. I can add multiple entries if I want more people to be listed or if I just want them as contributors. And again, these elements, we're trying to leverage that LRMI metadata. So these are some of the elements that are, are most popularly used to date. And then keywords and tags that would go ahead and be placed on that public page to be captured for the search engines. And here is that public URL 
So this is a good way for you to know if you publish your class, how users would be able to get to that um, without having to go through your instructor homepage. And if I open that up in a new tab, you can see that this is pretty similar to what I had shown earlier on the slide and briefly looked at earlier. Okay, so again, since I had already published my class, um, it shows me when it's last been published, how many versions there have been, as well as you know the packages for me to download and the common cartridge license. Okay, then I would submit. I can if I've made changes to my course, um, you know I could come in and always update my package so that the latest one is out there. Okay, I'm not going to do that at this point, as, as right now it's not a queued process, and that's something that we're working on, um, just so it's not spinning, in case I need to go to other areas of the course today. Okay, so again, from within your My Course Sites, you would come into your course, come to your control panel, package and utilities, and then publish open resource. And then once on this page, once submitted, Again, you, on this page, you have the ability to share yourself out with your social networks if you want folks to be able to pick this up. Okay. Or, again, through general web search, as our users who continue to publish courses continues to grow, the, uh, they should be able to be picked up. All of this information and metadata should be picked up by the general search engine searches. Okay. So let me just open up the chat screen here and see if anything has come through. Answer a couple questions. And then I want to go ahead and return to this presentation. Just give you a sense of, you know, here's where we started. A couple of items about where we are intending to go. Okay, let me scroll back here. So I see a couple connections um, being made, so that's great. I'm glad we can facilitate some of those. Pamela, you have a question. How does it identify us? Is it possible to set up more than one account, or is there machine recognition? Um, so let me address. Uh, basically, it's identifying you by name at present. So here, and as, as our metadata attempts continue to grow, uh, we'll probably continue to provide some background open graph information so that if you're sharing, you know, your, your information is being picked up by Facebook and LinkedIn um, quite easily. And then on your, the public pages, again, it's, it's by name. So if I'm not answering your, cor your question correctly, let me know. And then within your Creative Commons license, it's taking the author here, or the authors listed, and publishing the information there within the package itself, as I showed earlier. So as folks download uh, these packages, the Creative Commons license inside the course attribu attributes it to you know, both the authors and the contributors. Let me know if that helps answer your question there, Pamela. Okay, Levette, um, at present, just to quickly address your question, the, um, there is no way to delete courses yet in course sites by the individuals, so just feel free to contact support, and I'll remind everyone how to do that, too, as part of today's session. So, made a great question. Um, presently, iTunes U is something that can be linked with our enterprise clients uh, into Blackboard. So it's something that we haven't yet ventured into in, in uh, core sites, but it is definitely uh, something that we are exploring. So that's sort of leading us into that, that future roadmap and uh, insight. So thank you for sharing that, that example. Okay, Meta, you're also looking at um, a question on, is there a list of courses? Uh, so at present, because each of the way course sites are set up, as, you, as, we, as I demonstrated today, each, inst each instructor has their own home page. 
but I've begun to look at ways to create a sample exemplary page um, like you're looking for, particularly using our exemplary course design winners uh, from Blackboard. So that is something that also is being uh, looked at and put together as we speak. They are open to the public as long as one, they're guest accessible here, Meta, as well as they've been published here at the open package. So once you discover this um, page and download the package, you know, definitely able to be used and all of this is public. I just don't have a federated or a, I should say a curated catalog of sorts of all of those who have published their course yet. So that's something that we are are looking into. Okay, so the discoverability portion. So let me, some of these are going back into um, the next area. So I'm going to stop sharing my uh, web browser here and come back into the session. You guys have some great questions and some good insight into where we're looking to go next. Okay, so Meta, you had a, a good question. How do I find them? So we started the discoverability story strictly with trying to align the uh, the instructor homepage. And since right now, Course Sites is much more on an individual uh, use basis, we've aligned that those pages with the LRMI metadata. So you typically would be able to discover them through general web searches. Um, our next step is to look at what type of catalog we can put together. Uh, and again, since we're working a bit in tandem with Blackboard's core development team, what we're trying to do is not replicate what's already there or even look at what's out in the, in, in the open education space and perhaps leverage um, something like enabling instructors not only to publish to their home page, but publish to Merlot, which has been a long-standing repository of open education content. Okay, so that's some of the, the items that we're looking at moving into since we just released this capability in October. We've been doing some continued research and connections uh, with those in the space like Merlot with connections um, and attending some conferences to see what else we might be missing. Okay, we're also looking to provide some more granularity. So at present, the you know when you publish your class, as I've demonstrated, it it captures that whole package, uh, the course itself. We're looking to provide some granularity and decisions in that regard, um, as well as looking at not only pushing information, but currently there is a billing block we've made available in course sites that you can search for more low content, but we want to go ahead and broaden that highway so that you can go ahead and pull in information from other repositories. Um, there are current mashups that allow you to pull from YouTube and SlideShare and Flickr, but we want to go ahead and look at what other popular ones are being used and give you the ability to consume information from um, those repositories as well as publish as we talked about today. And if you're looking at different sites such as Connections or such as Merlot, we're talking with those organizations to see what there might be uh, a way for you to collect or push information uh, rather than have to pull it from within course sites. There might be a way for you to push that into a course site and just have you collect information and then course sites could be the environment that you end up delivering the information to students or participants uh, within a learning environment. We're also looking at um, providing a bit more options in terms of licensing. So we started out with the CC BY. We know that some just might not want to abide, um, you know, buy that general open license and provide a bit more um, granularity there as well. So Common Cartridge, or pardon me, Creative Commons has approximately six licenses now available um, that we could potentially give you the option to choose from. And some restrict commercial use, you know, some are, uh, there's no derivatives available, just use as is. So just there's a good number of, of items out there that would reflect different use cases and purposes for use of the content. Okay, so these are just some of, you know, outside of what we've talked about already, some of our plans. I'm definitely happy to collect 
some of your thoughts based on what I've shown today. If you haven't already shared in the chat or if you feel like you want to uh, talk live, happy to have you do that as well. So as you're pulling your thoughts together there, let me go ahead and see if I've missed any questions here in the last few minutes as I've described some of our future considerations. Okay, so Matt, you had a question on what version of the CC BY license. So we're we using the 3.0. But I, I see that you answered that yourself later on. Okay, and if for some reason I've, if I've scrolled back and I've missed your question, uh, feel free to enter it again. Apologize if that's the case. It's been a great active session. Um, so I'm just double checking here to see if I've missed anything. Meta, thanks so much. I appreciate that, that comment. Um, definitely you know, trying to participate in the conversation at the very least and see where else we can go. So I mentioned that this capability is not yet in the core product, but part of the purpose of Core Sites is to really, again, incubate innovation and take these elements uh, that we're exploring with the teachers and students who sign up and use Core Sites on a daily basis, collect their feedback and use uh, cases and then feed that into our core development. So it's possible that what we see here could end up in the core product um, in a, at a future date. So part of your feedback uh, could help shape that as well. I see a couple of other questions coming in um, regarding just the use of the platform itself. So let me scroll back, just try to filter them out a little bit, and, but otherwise I'm definitely happy to address some of those general questions. Great, Mohammed, thanks so much. So let me, um, as your thoughts are coming through, I'll go ahead and leave up this information for you to stay in touch. Um, for those of you who might want a actual presentation or a copy of the presentation, feel free to email me um, directly and I'll go ahead and send you a link to that. As we mentioned earlier, the recording will be posted up to YouTube. Um, but I do hope that I was able to show you today, if you do have to leave, um, how Core Sites could help enable you to publish your course as an OER, as well as for you to share that out with social networks and for others to discover uh, your resources. Thank you for the very kind comments. Uh, Barbara, that's wonderful. <laughs> very wonderful. And Pamela, you have a question. Is there a place of, come back here, place for teachers to collaborate? So I would recommend that you could potentially um, set up your, set up a course site and you can invite participants to also be instructors. So you can invite people to be students or you can invite folks to be instructors. Um, so I would recommend if that's, if you're already, you know, sort of looking for a Blackboard sandbox, course sites can definitely serve in that capacity since we'll remain on the latest version, uh, at least 30 days within a general release. Uh, so go ahead and feel free to um, invite, you know, the other participants as, as instructors in that environment. You can also graduate students in your roster to other course roles if you want them to explore that as well. So I'm going to say thank you for now just to end the recording for those who may be listening and then I'm going to go ahead and address some questions that I see here in the chat. Okay, otherwise again if, if you have to leave and uh, you would like a response just please go ahead and feel free to email me directly um, and I appreciate all of your great comments.